everyone. I am so excited to have this conversation to get started with the do this, not that, a helpful guide for non black people when it comes to being a part of Juneteenth. Um, I want to start off by thanking everyone who made time to come, who's going to make time to listen to the replay, who's going to make time to um, reply, tag, engage. Um, I do not take it lightly that people trust me, think of me as a thought leader when it comes to engaging in conversations around Juneteenth. Um, I also want to say that I'm so excited that I could get the one and the only uh, Desiree B. Stevens to join. Of Homa and Choctaw people. Um, I'm taking this call and being a part of this conversation as a descendant of enslaved people, right? I hate that, so I just, you know, just leading people off because, you know, we're going to have the replay and I don't want it to be like just empty air for folks. Oh, I know. Um, oh, I appreciate that. Yes. Honestly, honestly. So yeah. I was just making those acknowledgments. Um, and also, like, what does it mean to have this conversation as a descendant of enslaved people? That is where I was, and now my little stand is being weird. Okay, <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. Hello! Hi, girl! Salutations! Hey. <laughs> I am, like, running every... It's been a day. It's just been I, a day trying to prepare for like for tomorrow. Day. Right? Yeah, I feel... Like, you know, I ain't gonna... I'll text you later what I'm gonna do after this call. Uh, but... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's definitely been a day and I don't know what my stand is being weird but um for the real got chapstick on my lips yeah I'm just trying to get okay. I'm here am I back okay you're back you know what in the in the ghost of time soy is going on on the internet listen it, it's that day. It's that day. You know how it goes? Yeah. And tomorrow, all the ways in which the algorithm is going to act up. Yes, indeed, you, honey. Not, not That's all. off tomorrow. I, I'm taking the day off tomorrow, too. I love that for us. You know, I mean, the internet's probably just going to show all the white people, the allies. Oh, my teaching God. Teaching people about Juneteenth tomorrow. That's probably what's going to happen crazy when you say it like that. Now I got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> you just messed up my barbecue plans. Oh my goodness. It's so funny. Look, not, not Sarah Beth and Leslie Jane teaching the people about the Juneteenth. Girl, I cannot. I cannot. Okay, so listen. What are we doing? What you we created this amazing guide that I've already reposted. First of all, Listen, you working hard like Kobe in these streets for Juneteenth, for Pride. You up in that thing. Okay. okay. You are doing the things, the things with an S. But I thought that you would be someone who could be in conversation with me about what are the things that people who are not Black should be doing tomorrow, should be aware of. And I also want to add a lens that... I fully 3,000% trust that you could bring into this conversation around also, if you happen to be in the diaspora, but you are not the, the descendant of enslaved folk, right? Because that's a whole different, right? I like that. That's yeah. a thing, that is right? People on the call right now be like, wait a second, I thought all you all came from No. Slavery. No, we oh. did not. <laughs> I love that you make that distinction because in my sub stack, I make that distinction. I'm like Black United States Americans because there's a completely different history across the diaspora. So that's a really amazing point that you're bringing up there. Go ahead. Yes. Carry on. So um, why I bring that distinction is because all people across the diaspora have been impacted by anti-Blackness, have been impacted by racism, all people in the diaspora wear in our bodies the, the colonial violence. Right. Right. That is attached to the transatlantic, that's attached to the domestic. Because this is one of those things where I also like to tell people stop saying there was one slave trade here in the continental US. There was two, two occurred. All right. 
So, you know, I just want to also make space in case anyone goes up to just random black people and be like, hey, random black person, I'm so sorry for slavery. Okay, first of all, let's, let's start there. Let's start there. <laughs> it's not, so I made a little thing, right? Because I've been trying to get back. I've been off for a year talking online, but I've been doing the work behind the scenes, right? Workshops, the community, sub staff, writing. I've been doing the work at my capacity, which was being quiet. Now I'm talking again. I so, love that. I feel like you need to put that shit on a t-shirt. Yeah, now I'm talking. I, I, I should, because I said that like two years ago. I'm like, I'm speaking. I don't need you to speak for me, right? Like consistently talk over me. So what I want to say just right there to that point is Juneteenth is not a celebration for non-Black United States Americans. Whether it's across the diaspora and you're Black, and damn sure if you're white. So like happy Juneteenth, right? Like is not the answer. Um, I can I say know. that to you though. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're not talking to us. <laughs> we're like, I can. I just said that to my friend, right? I'm like, I picked up my kids from daycare. I'm very intentional about keeping them in super black spaces. I'm like, yo, they're closed tomorrow. You see cultural competence. You know, they're like, see y'all on Thursday. I'm like, enjoy your Juneteenth, girl. Like everybody knows what's mm -hmm. going on. Um, mm -hmm. But no, it's not a celebration and very specifically for white people those that call themselves allies right i wrote this little thing here and it's about praxis because that's what i've been talking about and praxis is where you take practice to theory and first of all too many of you guys have self-proclaimed yourselves to be allies so since you want to do that but then I diversified my social media and I bought all those books. I care. <laughs> so, since you guys have self-proclaimed yourselves allies, whomever you may be, I want you to think about Praxis for Juneteenth and going on and going forward. And Praxis is about taking the theory into practice. So you have theorized that you are an ally, though you don't know every Negro in the world. So you are not allies to black people. We are not the tuna. We're not the fish. You cannot save the dolphins like that. That's not how that works. We're not Why a you like this? Because Why I am like that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so activated. You it's said he cannot save the dolphins. <laughs> Girl, I'm like, I adore you. I adore you. When they come here like, to my ally. I'm like, who told you that? Every black person you ever met? And even then, like, I would never turn around and say, I'm an ally to trans people. I, I Like, I'm gonna do my very best to amplify that, that, that community, that voice. Like you said, my sub stack this whole month, I've written every day except like three days because my grandnephew was born. And I have spoken about all like the queer liberationists. There's not been one hetero person featured <laughs> on my Substack this month. And they've all been different. So it's not like there's so little, right? Yeah. I still would not say, well, I wrote this Substack and I'm a ally. It's just. And on top of that, I'm an expert too. It's hubris is what it is. And yes, to the expert thing. So starting with that first point is there is no happy Juneteenth for you. This is a time for you to reflect and honor. Mm. And what you're honoring is witnessing that you're seeing right now the resilience of Juneteenth, right? You're seeing two black women from, <laughs> this, I mean, I know. The I know. South, the See, South. I'm not from the South, girl, I'm from the Bronx. But <laughs> I mean, technically I'm from the Bronx too, but you get what I'm saying. This is where we live right now. Oh, yeah. but I I'm like an hour and 15 minutes away from where my family was enslaved. So you know what I'm saying? I live in the South now. So seeing that, seeing the camaraderie, seeing the collaboration, because I think that that's something else that is not talked about enough within this realm of like anti-racism, DEIA, and decolonization, is that decolonization is collaborative work. I'm not in competition with you. Mm -hmm. So when people are observing the relationships in the community very specifically between Black women, it is a moment to reflect and ask yourself how the people 
that are descended of chattel slavery. Three generations. We're not talking long. We're not yeah. talking very long. The women of Tulsa Massacre are still alive and talking and want to know why the fuck they ain't got no money. Last week. Last week. <laughs> so we're not talking very long, very, you know, where things were legal. We're not even 70 years away from civil rights. My father went to segregated schools. I'm 45 years old. So for me, the call to action for white people is reflection and honoring the community and the resilience that has come within the Black American community. Like we will find ourselves anywhere. Like, hey, girl, I see you. I see your shoes. I said that. Little okay. black woman today. I was like, okay, lipstick. Okay. Somebody was walking by in the grocery store. I was like, I see your shirt. Okay. <laughs> and we struck up a conversation, and. And so that makes, I, I, want, I want it to be about a reflective time. That's basically what it is. Is instead of trying to jump in, because that always causes the co-opting of something, it's bad enough it's a national holiday as if we were not celebrating Juneteenth before then. As, um, as, a, as though Oprah Lee didn't exist in March and petition. She is also featured in my resource guide as the grandmother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for me, that's what I want. No happy Juneteenth from white people. I want reflection and I want action. Period. Let's let's. I wanna I wanna build on a few things. Please do. One, Mississippi ratified the Thirteenth Amendment in twenty thirteen. I thought it was twenty twelve. Damn, I thought it was twenty twelve. But Blair lifted up that it was twenty thirteen. So I just was like, okay, maybe like technical. But twenty thirteen, twenty twelve. The point is, it was in the two thousands, like juvenile. I was just. There. I love us, because you know, like for the 99 and 2000s, what's happening? I love <laughs> it's great immediately. <laughs> you was alive. Your black ass was alive when it happened. My kids. <laughs> That's what I am saying. Was Obama president? I feel, was it Obama president? Yes. Listen, in Paulding County or somewhere here in Georgia, they like literally just desegregated prom like three years ago, like, or maybe. Maybe five now because it was like pre pandemic. So, so, like, so that's the thing we need to hold on to. Stop telling us it's ancient history. Stop telling us. And I think you're the one who told me about epigenetics and how long it takes something to cycle through your genetic, you get what I'm saying, to your genes. Or so, like, that's the first thing I want to highlight. Stop telling one of the things you, I know you got a list of things you shouldn't do, but let me just add something to the list. Come on. Don't, bro. don't try to time stamp our shit. And let me just jump in right there. The reason why, like I, like, I take the lens on decolonization that I do is focusing and censoring. I censor you when we're working together, not in my life, focus. And censoring white trauma and, and white pain is because that right there. Because they haven't recognized their own grief. You mm -hmm. want to rush my grief. You want to rush my grief. And I'm still grieving. There are black mothers grieving for sons and daughters they haven't even had yet being born into the, the supremacist society. You are not going to tell me. I enjoy my son knowing that at any given time, if somebody wants to call from a neighborhood and be like, this little black boy is riding around on a bike and looks dangerous, he could lose his life over summer. Do not yeah. tell me about my grief. Focus on your grief. Carry on. Yeah. The second thing I want to highlight for the people who are Black on this call, who are descendants, absolutely, you have space and range to celebrate. Yes. Because to borrow a phrase from, we need, I don't want to call him late great, but that version of Kanye, you wasn't supposed to make it past 25. Joke's on you, you still alive. Right? It is both the, the fact that you and I exist that we exist in joy and possibility and creativity. And so we do get to celebrate, right? Yeah. Tomorrow, I, all I'm doing is being black. Well, first of all, you know I'm blacky black every day anyway. But we actually get to occupy that space. Yes. Because we get to be our ancestors' wildest dreams. So let's not get it twisted. What we're saying is for people who are not that, it is that reflection. It is the honoring. It is the pause. It is the space. But for Black people, I very much suggest you go sit someplace. If you got the day off, celebrate sit there. So hard. So hard. So I hard. want you to celebrate so hard, Black people, that on Thursday, you might need to cut the, call the day off. Absolutely.
absolutely. I, 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 I mean, I would take the week off, but uh, <laughs> and this is me. This is the this is the Houston, Texas music that is in uh, um that is impacting me right here. Go hard in the paint is what. <laughs> Hard in the paint is what I suggest for the black coats. So I just wanted to put that out there. I agree. And then since you're saying that, let's piggyback on those that are still right descendants of chattel slavery, but not yet, but are not black American. Think about it the same way we come into your festival, right? When we have like you know what's um what just happened with the feathers and the pretty things. Kind of <laughs> Carnival. No. <laughs> that's not ours. That's not ours. And I know that when I go there, right? Like yeah. I'm celebrating them. I'm celebrating their black ass culture. And yes. I love that. And yeah. I recognize that I'm a guest mm -hmm. in that space. It's not yeah. mine. Yeah. I'm just thankful to be there. And so same, right? Like that mm -hmm. same reciprocity. If you're at the barbecue, you chilling or, you know, you're at a, a meet and greet or workshops or whatever's going on, a speakeasy, you're still a guest in there and we're just celebrating together and honoring our experiences throughout the diaspora. And if you are white in those spaces, you are 100% a guest and it is a privilege because everywhere you go, you are dangerous to us. That is an important distinction. We look come back to that. I just want to shout out a mutual of ours, Janice, Dr. Janice Gasson Massar. And she's a good friend. And we've had so many conversations because Janice is not a descendant of enslaved folks. Her parents are immigrants. And so, you know, she is somebody who I think has done a remarkable job of like making the distinction. When people call her and be like, hey girl, we want you to do a Juneteenth, da da da. Janice be like, look, I ain't a descendant. Let me redirect you to these other people. All right. And I'm, um, it's unfortunate, Des, but I've actually seen um people other folks in the diaspora who are not descendants who don't have the same visceral experience of what, what anti-black might look like when you are a black american be chosen to speak on our behalf for that reason right but so i've seen it it happens i'm not making that shit up it's not you know what i'm saying like that's a thing i believe you and it's an unfortunate thing because you can't speak to it. Like I would never, it still comes down to the same hubris and, 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 and exploitation. Cause like, I would never be like, oh, I'm going to go speak on the behalf of, you know, Caribbean Americans, the Caribbean, the Carib the Jamaicans of the, I would, I would, I would just, it's not my experience. It's not even, it's not even how my DNA or my epigenetic trauma was formed and shaped. So mm -hmm. I could not even embody it. I think that that's more, it's not even necessarily the visceral, it's embodied, mm -hmm. right? Like in every single thing. I've given this example before when I've been speaking, like in my neighborhood groups, I live in a small like uh, area in Atlanta and like there's a bunch of Georgia pines and everybody's like, I just love the trees. And I'm like, oh, I think about when I see these big ass Georgia pines is how many black people swung from them how many were beat under a tree just trying like just trying to live just like like what you're saying about why the celebration is for tomorrow i just want to go sit under the tree and have a sandwich but now i'm gonna go get the skin beat off my back and that is what i think about i take my children to a park perkinson park is near me and perkinson park used to be perkinson plantation yeah those are the thoughts in my mind, like, yo, three generations ago, you would have been working these fields. And that is what that celebration is about tomorrow. That is why we, as Black United States Americans, get to show up and go hard in the paint. And yeah. that is exactly why it is a time for white people to reflect. Because what the fuck are you celebrating? Them beating my children in the field? I'm confused. <laughs> What are you uh, celebrating? What are you celebrating? I want people in the in the in the chat because I think either one of us or maybe mine, my internet got weird. So if you're still with us in the chat, can still hear us, can still access, just put something in the chat, give us a heart or something to let us know that we're still plugged in and that the internet trolls aren't trolling us. We'd love to 
get some interaction because something went weird on my end is i don't know about you. yeah i mean i don't see anything okay. so I'm just kind okay of we're, okay thank you lindsay thank you lindsay okay so now let's go back to we talked about briefly this idea of for people who racialize as white no matter how good you are or how much you show up in allyship you can still be dangerous no, and so can be you are yes you are thing. and so we don't want you all to be dangerous to us tomorrow or at least we want to give you some tools to help you i mean you can stay at home and reflect <laughs> Oh, I know. So simple, right? And like, my heart goes out, right? Like, why? But are Des, I have the day off. It's the summer. Uh, yeah. Let's go into that. Let's go into that. <laughs> okay. So, one, you should go to the link in my bio right now, and you should grab the Do This, Not That Juneteenth Edition Resource Guide. And my praxis and, and people, Believe me, I have the best of business coaches. <laughs> and they're like, you need to charge. And I'm like, my praxis, my ethics, don't let me do that because education, resources, and tools should not have barriers against them. Like, it's like, this is the most anti capitalistic thing that I could do while still surviving capitalism. So the whole point of that is, it's pay what you can. If you could afford a thousand dollars for it, you should. That's how that works. That's praxis. That's equity. If you can't, it's marked at pay what you can. So it's literally you can get it for nothing. But go and get that. But to cover one of those things, right, is to not that is do not co-opt the celebration. Do not, right? Because you guys, do I have a suggested price? You could give me 19 just so you could remember. Juneteenth. I don't have a suggested price on there because I want people to start literally valuing the work and showing up with their money, considering <laughs> that this economy is quite literally based on the enslavement of our ancestors and we're celebrating their freedom tomorrow. My one of my suggestions in that resource guide is since it's now a paid holiday, is to give your check that day to black people. Then, oh, are you being paid? But then they will still argue about reparations. If you are actively being paid tomorrow and you are not a descendant of chattel slavery, you are 100% profiting off of the enslavement of my ancestors. If you are selling merch on Juneteenth and you are not a descendant of chattel slavery, you are your fucking ancestors and you are profiting off of the exploitation and the enslavement of my ancestors. If you are hosting a workshop, a digital format, if you are doing anything in any form and profiting off of Juneteenth, you are your ancestors. Wildest dreams too. Look at you continuing <laughs> the enslavement, the exploitation of black people. You made them proud. So, that's my answer. If you are going to get paid, because now I got a specific right to write an article, because you said, you know, lead a workshop, but write an article or a think piece on how to ally for Black people on Juneteenth. Who said that? I said that? No, but I know somebody who did it last year, and I, I still feel bad about it. And you know, I'm big sag to energy. When I'm scoring, I'm scoring forever. Oh, I, I, was I like, know somebody. I know, I know somebody who is of Southeast Asian descent who wrote a whole slew of like articles about how to ally black people for Black History Month for Juneteenth, and they're getting paid for that. Yes, it's wild. And people are activated in your comments. You may want to take care of that because we have one person that says, "How is a person whose family who immigrated to the U.S. from Italy in 1920 profiting off your ancestors?" Somebody else said the entire country benefit benefited financial financially. I'm sure they're saying from slavery, and it still benefits. Yes, 
It does. How a person whose family immigrated to the U.S. from Italy is profiting off your ancestors is because it was built off of our ancestors. My grandparents immigrated from Ireland in 1952. I feel like, like that should be the end of that conversation. Carry on, Kina. Well, I just want to add my little two fits, which is it may not have been your fault, but it is certainly your problem. And if your ancestors came from 1920, that means when they got over here, they were able to be white and leverage. No. Now that, there we go. They were able to leverage it, right? Because like now somebody who came over from Italy in 1920, this is where the immigrant white experience interests me because I come from the immigrant white experience. <laughs> um, at any point in time, these people who then got coded as white, because somebody's Nona in 1920 looked like me. Somebody's. I, I know Italians. <laughs> gotcha. And there's a couple that look like me, or even more fair, and they got recoded as something else. As soon as any ethnic immigrant white group that is now coded as white got the chance, they assimilated. Do you speak your language? Do you speak your dialect? Do you practice your indigenous culture? Do you have anything left from Italy except maybe your anglicized Italian name? And that shows you the assimilation process and how at every given turn, when there were ethnic white people, they traded whatever their culture was in was to become white. I 100% recognize the struggle of ethnic white people. You were Italian, they were called Dago, they were called Box like without papers, they were treated. The, the, the system perpetuates itself, right? You guys were treated the way that they're treating the Mexicans now. Yeah. The Irish were treated the way the Italians were in the 20s. Like, it just keeps on. That's why you dismantle it. The difference is the foundation is our ancestors. Yes. So I took that person out, which is not something I regularly do, but we don't got time for white shenanigans today. Yeah. So I, I do want to respond to the idea the entire country benefited financially from slavery and it still benefits. I mean, arguably, on a technicality, for sure, I'll make space for that. But what I will say is when I look at the racial wealth gap, when I look at the social determinants of health, whatever benefits the descendants of enslaved may have gotten from like the idea of being in the United States, we are getting very little, if any of those benefits. Ooh. That's a stretch. Anyway, we're not censoring white voices, we're censoring black voices. Yeah, so that's so why I'm responding to that because I'm perceiving that that person is a person of color oh. and has a valid concern. So that's why I'm addressing that, right? And I also think this might be a good time to this to highlight uh, one of the things that is on my to do or don't do list, um, which is stop giving white people credit, particularly people like Abraham Lincoln for doing something that he didn't do, right? So one of the things I would like people to do tomorrow is not give Abraham Lincoln the responsibility of freeing the enslaved people because that is not what that particular white man did, right? He's signed the paperwork. And underneath the idea that the written word is everything, censoring him is always censoring white men. Right? That's why I really appreciate your words because it, it, it's about divesting from mm -hmm. that, right? Like, and mm -hmm. answering that lens. He signed the paper because he was so sick and tired of the fucking revolts and nobody was stopping. There were no happy slaves. Get that daughter of the Confederate myth out of your mind, right? There was no, like, we show love going to work, <laughs> boss. Mm -hmm. That was not happening. Yeah. Not, nobody wants to be in a violent situation like that brutal so get that out of your eye at your head and in my sub stack which is not paywalls so please go and you know read it you will find stories of like revolts and things that you can read or documentaries that you could watch tomorrow because again the do this for me is be reflective contemplate mm -hmm. things sit with it where is your praxis my yeah. main to do is where are you turning your theory, because it is a theory that you are an ally, into practice. Where are yeah. you showing up that a black person would turn around and say, I see you doing the work. Not your white friends, 
not your book club, not your mom group. Where are you doing the work that black, black people who are doing the work would say, I see you. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you. And even if we didn't see you, but you still are doing it. And, and I do want, because I think Abraham Lincoln actually shows is a good case study does too, right? Because arguably the way he gets reread as as some type of ally, because at least publicly he was like, oh, slavery is probably like an immoral thing, right? But again, he didn't even have praxis, right? So I think it's a good, he's actually a good example of someone who, for, because there was a little bit of nuance to how he saw racism and anti-blackness, that was enough for people to make the giant leap right and some of us do that right some of us like he freed the slaves da, 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 da. just because someone is not actively seeking your death does that mean <laughs> that they are actively supporting your life right and and that's the indoctrination of a system right like when we talk about systemic racism it's that we too as black people are also indoctrinated with the same stuff the difference is, is it, it becomes internalized mm -hmm. right we start worshiping what has been given to us. We start utilizing the violent language of white against each other. We become colorist. We become homophobic. We become we become them. Because and then we look at white people who aren't actively trying to do this, and we're like, oh my gosh, come to the barbecue because. All right. No, that's a great point of the difference between interpersonal and systemic, mm -hmm. right? I have very close relationships with white women. Very. Like, some of my best friends are white people. <laughs> like, one of my best friends are white. I know, right? Yeah. Some of my best friends are white. But, like, seriously, and I feel a deep connection and camaraderie because that is the fa those are the faces I saw growing up. So I don't walk into a space. I'm very well aware I don't walk into a space the way a monoracially Black person does, right? Like, yeah. like white face of my mother, my aunt, my cousin, you know, mm -hmm. like they're my family. So I have an automatic, my guard is down. I don't feel necessarily unsafe, right? I can be in community. I could be in familiar relationships and not feel awkward. So that even being said, there's still a difference between that interpersonal relationship. And I, and I my family understands that. In this living room, in this space, in this safety of where we are in our home in our family is one thing when we step out the door how we are perceived is completely different and unfortunately in a system of hierarchies and supremacy how we are perceived is how we are going to be treated yeah 45 years of my life nobody has ever assumed that my mother is my mother yeah it's that, that right that's systemic that's interpersonal so even if you did go to the cookout, that is not a universal. That is your black friend trusted you. And I want you guys to start noticing that, right? Because the most problematic white women that are online have black kids mm. and a black man. And I'm like, you're, you're, that's a privilege to be in that space, to be in that community. And you don't see it as such. And instead, you want to wield that against the very community you voluntarily put yourself in. Agreed. Agreed. So what are some other things on your list, list, sis? Huh? So what are some other things on your list? Out what? of the space? Let me see. I'll do the really quick rundown. Don't give them all, because I still want people to go online and get this and pay you. Oh. Here's another one, which is what people are doing now, is do this, is allow yourself to be educated on Juneteenth's history. And why I say allow yourself, and, and I'm specific about that language, is because too often it's been put out there like, educate yourself. I don't want you doing a damn thing on your own. If it is not Black-led, I don't think you should be. I, I, and also, if it is not Black-led and about liberation of all. Because then there is a such thing, let's keep this 100, as the pedagogy of the oppressed. And you will 100% get black people that are like, oh, I'm finna tear their head off. Uh, you mean, you, you mean there's going to be Byron Davises that are out there saying that Jim, the black family benefited from Jim Crow? No. 
are gonna be those. Is he? Is he? Is, is he gonna? Is he gonna be in places tomorrow? Telling people that. Absolutely. And there's gonna be those spaces too where there are black people that are just like like they don't want they're not really trying to help you do anything they're just angry at you and, and you're gonna be abused those spaces exist too and I have to be honest about that so like learning how to trust yourself and being in spaces but like that that that's a main thing allow yourself to be educated right like in this where you know Kina took people out but like you're not even really trying to hear what we have to say. You're really just trying to combat. I don't care about your immigration status. I don't care about how we know, we understand poverty. Classism impacts white skin bodies the way racism impacts black skin bodies. That is that, like it's a system. This is a business. Mm -hmm. And the sooner you recognize that the United States of America is a business. It is. It was a land grab, right? This is not, it, this is- a, It was a labor grab? Yeah. It was a land grab to build the physical business on it was a labor grab to have the labor for free and they built the business that we are currently in and like any other business it has a business culture it has a business ethos it has a foundation it has a marketing plan it has all of the things the sooner you recognize those systems we can stop doing the tit for tat back and forth foolishness because you sound foolish and you sound ill-educated i mean so, i've never blocked someone from a lie before I, ever and okay. like i just wasn't gonna do it i might have done it last week but i wasn't gonna do it today i mean in terms is. and in terms of allow yourself to be educated again you've created so many resources I have a online virtual replay. So the 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 materials are out there. They're available. Um, you know, I almost feel like I want to say, but I think this is a, not necessarily fair, but I just feel like there's such a flux of quality information out there that if someone did decide to not be educated or misinformed, it's almost like you're making a choice. You know what I'm saying? Because the information is available it's an active choice and this is why i don't i don't deal with them right because we are living in such an amazing time to recognize the level of our interconnectedness right we have ig you could be anywhere we have tiktok we have facebook we are watching in real time another land grab by the american government yeah. we're watching that yeah. is what's happening we're watching the expansion of whiteness in real time. Right? Yeah. And the revisionist history, too. We're seeing that in real time. Like, you know, for those of us who are students of history might necessarily not be history historians, it always just blows my mind that on January 6th, two years ago, we, we had a day full of coverage across channels, public access, and cable right we saw the anti-black violence that happened at a capital and i'm very specific with that language because it was anti-black because it was denying black votes it was anti-black because black people built the capital for free not once but twice so I, I feel like if it's the people house it's ours so there's that and now in real time people are like what are you talking about that was just civil organized civil disobedience and i'm like what in the daughters of the confederacy are y'all talking about oh you know, I... so this is like the same people who it's the same energy that made the civil war about states rights not enslavement in the first place right and i'm like before our very eyes y'all want us all to act like we didn't see what happened on one six we saw it it was on my tv player okay so i'm gonna say something and because i have a very different conference con a very controversial take on January 6th because I do believe in multiple truths and because white people never sense of black people's feelings. They never see past their nose. So just like states' rights, right? Like, I'm like, I'll have these conversations. I've had them with some good old boys from South Georgia, Confederate bag on the back of their truck. And I'm like, buddy, we got to talk about this. Totally get it. Understand that. But what you always seem to miss is that those states' rights we're about owning my people. <laughs> like, y'all leave that part <laughs> conveniently, 
right? Like the rest of the shit I could get with because I don't like an overreaching government either. Yeah. Right? But we cannot leave out the state's race of enslaving my great great grandma. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And right? not to mention the document where secession happened, literally right. named that we pissed off about slavery. Right. I mean, all of those things. Same with January 6th. White people never look beyond their nose. Right, so I feel the same way you do. The, the the building belongs to the people. Tear that shit up. Y'all are not French enough for me. So as far as charging a government building, tear that motherfucker up. Like when the riots were going on and they started burning police stations, I was like, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> but conveniently, right, and quite intentionally. That censoring of whiteness is always anti-black and is always violent to black bodies. So while I get it, I get January 6th, right? And I'm like, that's actually the energy that we need. Because when you got the vote blue, no matter who, and now we got this asshole in here, and Trump is definitely going to win now up against Biden's old killer Joe ass. Um, <laughs> Anywho, that's a whole other live. That's a whole different live. <laughs> When the whole vote blew, no matter who people were going on. And I was like, so if Trump turns his ticket, are we voting for him then too? Like, you guys, whatever. If I was like, so if you believe that Biden actually rigged the election, would you not tear shit up? Like, you guys are really not wanting what you think that you want. So I could respect the energy of tearing shit up, but I can never respect the energy of not understanding how your violent acts are always self-serving and always at the cost of black bodies. Yeah. Because wherever you show up, you are violent to us. Yeah. There we go. Thank you for that expansion. No problem. All right. But I, I think what I was also just and what I was also trying to highlight too is just that education you said that people need to create for themselves. Let it not be a revisionist one. Mm. That's the thing, uh, right? So revisionist history is going to come out of people who are not descendants who are not black right so try your very best that's what i'm saying des and i have offered some great resources um to build upon to not to not uh educate yourself on things that make you feel good right um and i, I hate to say it but you know it's one of those things that it's probably good for you if it don't feel good going down I love that because, yes, greatness is on the other side of your comfort zone. It's going to be uncomfortable. The yeah. reason why like, I have like, the Sunday gatherings now, thank God, thank you, Arabia Mountain Farm, for allowing that space and having the online community is because I know it's uncomfortable, right? I'm one of, uh, of the sort of educators that are like, listen, this is trauma. Like, I'm trauma-informed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm talking mm -hmm. I'm telling you that this is grief. I'm telling you it's going to activate things in your body. I'm telling you that stuff is, has been stored and it's there and we have to confront it. And I'm going to hold your hand through it. I just need you to be willing and I need to see your praxis. I need to see your action behind your theory of allyship. And I swear to God, with all of the people that I have that follow me, one would think, right? Like, that's got to be like, wow, girl, I got about five solid folks that I fuck with heavy, but they show up and they have been showing up for four years straight, uncomfortable. That, like, when I was down and out, they're like, I know you're going through something. Now they're showing up for me. Like, and I'll take those, right? I'm on my Jesus energy. Like, I'll take these 13. And <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, a, that's your Jesus energy. That's it. So, <laughs> here's the last two things I would add to my whole, my, my, my don't do list. We've been sharing with you all do's and don'ts throughout this conversation. Do, if you do got to leave your house as a, as a, if, if you must leave, a dead ass kind of want y'all just to like stay home. Just stay home. But if you got to, if you got to leave, you know, you know like in my, 
out you know the white woman discourse about what would we do if men were not outside that's how black folks feel about white folks what would we do but particularly tomorrow because somewhere in my mind's ideas right i am imagining a group of white people got together chartered a I, bus like I, um, and they are going to find a rib spot i hate it here and they're gonna go into that rib spot with their juneteenth t-shirts dear god that they got out of target and they're gonna be like we're here for the ribs and for the black people and so like i know that's gonna manifest in some form tomorrow i just hope it's not my city so all i'm asking is if you were gonna go outside because we are also telling people to support black businesses, although you can do that shit from home, right? You can't. You can do that right now. We too are we are entrepreneurs. So you don't gotta leave your house to do it. You could grub up the bins. Like if you were like, you know what, I, I just need to have barbecue. We ain't mad at you, but maybe grub hub, maybe do Uber Eats, right? right? Because it should be a time of contemplation and reflection. You should not be out celebrating. You know, like, white woman whisperer on TikTok. I'm going to say this, and it's definitely going to be triggering an activist. I mean, activated. And she put, you know, she spelled R-A blank I-S-T. You could put P or C. It feels the same. So imagine trying to be outside celebrating your freedom right because again chattel slavery was about it was it was forever <laughs> we were supposed to be enslaved today so it is a very valid celebration because the way the system back to the business of it was set up is that it was forever that's what makes slavery chattel slavery different from slavery around the world we were born into it. There was no escaping it. So it was supposed that, to be lifelong. You said that? Yeah, it was yeah. supposed to be lifelong. Right. Okay. So, I think we're losing you, Des. While we're waiting for, okay, Des, are you back? I think you're back. It didn't die for me. But my point is, it's, it's an active celebration because it should still go on today. The way it was created, it, was, it should still be happening today. So it's an active celebration. So when you think about that, this is what it looks like decentering right now. When you think about it from a black lens, yeah. what this celebration means, imagine the descendants of those that were intended to be enslaved today having to share space and celebrate with the descendants of those who enslaved us yeah that is what it looks like to actively decenter whiteness center blackness in an experience yeah that's it for the people who for a variety of reasons may go to a event tomorrow that we're gonna call mixed company what i'm asking is you would have a posture of humility then right okay fine you went to the real place or fine you went to the church event whatever it is you went to tomorrow have a posture of humility have an awareness that like you said i am a guest this is not my time to shine it's not my time to prove that I'm a good white person, that I'm an ally. It's not your time to apologize for my, my ancestors. You know how, if you want to really apologize for your ancestors on a slave, run us a check, call your congressional leader and tell them to get HR 40 to the Senate, right? Apologize with your hands and your feet, not with your mouth, right? That part. So have a posture of humility. That is the same thing. If you're going to be around Black folks tomorrow, you know, it's it's some childhood trauma. But growing up, when I was a kid and I was in, like, they would tell us, stay out of grown folks' business. So if you 
got in the room and the grown people didn't notice you, you would just be like, <laughs> it's like, if I'm just quiet, they won't know. Yeah. That's the energy that, right there. That's the energy. I like that. That's the energy, right? Like, especially if it's a public space. Again, some key points. Interpersonal versus systemic, right? I mean, interpersonal versus, yeah, systemic. If you're at your friend's house, they invited you there. You're a guest. That's different. Nobody's asking you to sit in the corner at your homegirl's house and act like nobody wanted you there. They invited you. But what Kina is discussing is if you are in a public space, censor that black experience. How would you feel? Think about it this way. We don't know which one of you are descendants of the ones who enslaved us, but we know every single one of you benefited from it. Here's another thing. If you know a black United States American, each and every one of us is a descendant of chattel slavery. Super simple. We were not here. Like, here we are. Yeah, there's no explanation why I have African DNA. None of my parents, none of my parents' parents, and none of my parents' parents ever went there. Because I had someone and ask me, like, how do you know? How do you know? Because I'm, I'm here. here. I'm here. I'm here. And don't nobody I know I've ever been to Africa. Because I'm here and I'm not in Nigeria. That's, that's how I know. <laughs> okay, so listen, you know I believe in giving Black women their last words. So this is going to be my last word. I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. I want people to know how they can support you, not just because you have some so many things, not just Juneteenth, so I want you to tell us before we get off the uh, call, what are the things that people can get plugged into, what they can learn, how they can support you. And I actually had meant to do this earlier, um, but if you can put your cash app information um, into the chat, I want people to run you dollars, support this black business right here in front of your face. Feel free to, or if you know it, I could type it into the chat right now. Grab the link from my bio because everything, like literally the link in my bio has all of the things. Let me look. Uh, let, I'm going to look right here. I'm going to put it in the chat right now because I don't want to have any reason for people to not do the thing. I appreciate that. Yes. If you put the link in my bio, all of the things are there. There are ebooks, there are journaling books, there's a community, there, there, there's, God. There is the do this, not that, Juneteenth resource guys. There's so much there. And I pretty much just, I love that link in bio because anything that's happening goes up in there. Yes. Uh, you have all the things there, Jess. Cash app, Venmo, all of the things are there. What <laughs> I want, my main final thought is in regard to Praxis, which is my whole thing with Juneteenth and this week I've been talking about taking your theory of you being an ally into practice. I don't want this just on the 19th of every month. I mean, of this month. I want you to find something that you could do within your capacity for the 19th of every month. I feel like I'm making it really easy. Find a Black educator you want to support. Find, and if you get that resource guide, you're going to find restorative justice lists from indigenous perspectives of Turtle Island because that's their shtick. You're going to find Black-led organizations that are doing the work. You're going to find ways to find creators, books to read. It's an amazing resource guide. Buy it, do it. It even has a checklist because y'all love checklists. They do, <laughs> the whites love a checklist. And I promised years ago, I was like, I'm not gonna give you guys a fucking checklist, but look at me, look at me loving on you and giving you a checklist. Sometimes we give the people what they want. That's the we give them what they want. Pull it out, print it out, get the checklist, do the things on the 19th of every month. And that will get you into exercising that muscle of practice. That's my Okay, point. I know I said it was gonna let you get the last word, but that reminded me of something. Okay. And then I'm gonna give you another, the last, last word. I'm done. One of the things I've been practicing, Des, is trying to keep a black audit meaning how much money did I give to black educators, creators, and black businesses over the year? You, you are amazing about that, though, because let me tell you something. I post a wish 
I have not not had a birthday gift from you. Girl, you look so pretty today. I should have sent you five dollars from coffee from you. You love black women. You my boo girl. Mm -hmm. I serenade so people. So I'm serious. So that, that's this is a good place. I love how you said on the 19th of every month. This is a good this could be a very good permission structure to say, okay, I'm ready to take that responsibility. I'm ready to engage in reparative justice. I'm ready to take a accountability. I'm ready for my allyship to show up regularly, not just when I don't want to feel guilty about some shit, because that's a whole different conversation. We can return to that later. So right. and then you engage in a black audit and then you can keep yourself accountable. Like, hey, in this calendar year, right? This is how, right. how much money I gave black people, right? So don't show black just, people. That's for you. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Dennis. I said, don't show, show black people. That's for you. Oh, oh, that's so good. You said that because what we don't need is anybody walking around and be like, look at my black audit. Looks, look, 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 look. We don't. Girl, we need to come back to this the 19th of every month. We don't need to do this, girl. Let's you do it. Every like, month. Be our version of, it's the first of the month. Hey. You know, hey. <laughs> The, oh my god it's warrior artist shout out you guys follow warrior artists right there i know some of you saw the artwork that my son did um during his two weeks art camp and how he is healing through his art and i love this black man and he's an amazing teacher and the way he is with these kids i had a blessing of sitting in with him for a week following him and whatever he's doing Whatever he's doing, support him. There we go. We're, you know what? We are going to do that. Here's our practice. Here's how we're going to hold The 19th it. of every month. The 19th of every month, Kina and I are going to come back. We're going to ask you for your black audit. We are the only black people you're going to give that black audit to. Don't go out there showing no black folks <laughs> the shit you done. Somebody's going to bring it to the, uh, the, the bridge joint tomorrow. Like, look, look, I worked overnight on my black audit. Kina and now I came for the rest. I want to see your black audit. Who have you supported? What black people have you followed and supported and amplified? Again, in the resource guide, I teach you what it means to amplify. Because to amplify does not mean speak over because I'm talking. Des, but oh my gosh, like how will people listen to me if I don't speak over the other people? Stop. But speaking of, I know we keep saying last word, but like if you don't do anything else tomorrow, there's some people, you know, who child, true, true. I keep seeing certain whites. Now, I regularly remelinate my feed, but every now and again, I am getting, I am, I am reminded that there are certain whites who are on the internet doing things. And so maybe tomorrow you could just like go through your feed and like remelinate it and stop following the white people who use their follows to leverage to block us. I love that. Look at us. You guys got a lot of little tips here. Rewatch this. You can download this, right? <laughs> they, I hope not. It, I mean, they probably could. Hey, oh, leave the rest of us all alone. Yes. Just, <laughs> just leave. Just leave it. You know what? I wish somebody would just buy me books and CDs tomorrow. And also, like, you know what I have been wanting since February? What? And I probably could, you know, I have been wanting one of, Who's the sis who does the parking lot tea? I fucking love her. I, I'm gonna I keep want that tea set. Her. I her tea sets are me. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get your tea set. Really, sis? I might go half with you on a tea set. <laughs> Somebody else should buy us both a tea set. I like the tea set. Let's get a tea. We should. You know what? Let's see how much money we get, and if we get enough. Let's buy a tea set each. I'll buy you one, you buy me one. And then on the 19th of the month, we're going to keep it pimping, but keep it brief. <laughs> and then we're going to drink our tea. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it more. I love it more. OK, so if anybody wants to buy us that tea set, you have Des's information. I'm going to put Des's contact information in the replay. You're 
you're gorgeous. You're beautiful. Enjoy your jewel too tomorrow. We're going to celebrate. We sure are. And we'll catch y'all later on these internet streets. Bye, y'all. Uh -huh.